Hey, welcome. We're at the True County Sheriff's Department here in LaGrange, Georgia. Very, very special guest we're talking to today, Deputy Michael Hockett. How are you doing, Mike? I'm good. How are you? Uh, Michael, how long have you been with the True County Sheriff's Department? I've um, been with the Sheriff's Office. I started out in the jail in 2013, and um, I've been there for about three years now. Okay. Now, what actually made you, because you, you look very young, um, what actually made you want to go into this line of work? Um, I've always loved law enforcement. Uh, mm -hmm. I started out in the jail division, and um, I would see the officers coming in every day, uh, bringing in the bad guy. And, um, after a period of time, I said, that's what I want to do. And uh, thankfully, I was blessed enough that the sheriff's office uh, sent me to the mandate school not mm -hmm. too long after that. Okay. So you wanted to catch some bad guys? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. All right. Not superhero type stuff. Just catch some bad guys. Just take the bad guys. Okay. All right. So, um... January 9th, uh, 2017, we can just safe to say that um, your world turned upside down. Um, on your way to the call, you were actually just responding what they call a welfare check, right? Right. Mike, I found out a lot of people don't know what a welfare check is. Could you explain that further if I ask you next Absolutely. question? Um, basically, um, welfare checks are fairly common uh, for us. Uh, people normally call it in when they see somebody that may be walking down the street that's uh, stranded. Um, they may see a vehicle that's um, on the side of the interstate that um, appears to be broken down and may want us to check and make sure they're okay. In this instance, uh, this uh, fellow's father had called and said that he seemed to be having some kind of mental episode and uh, wanted somebody to come try and make contact with him and see if he needed some help. Okay, so okay, I said I never knew that. I, I just thought you people hadn't seen you in a while or whatnot and people say hey I hadn't seen uh, George or Mary can you go to their house and check so that's kind of like what I thought it was like. I mean then that, that, that falls too. under it too. Okay okay um, when you went on that call did you did you feel any different or did, did it feel like a normal day or did you um, feel different or? The, the day it started out normal I had been answering calls um, and then this one came along and um, when I arrived on the scene I I kind of questioned for a second why the, the father had called and not unlocked the gate uh, when he had called me, but I didn't know if he may have some kind of disability and couldn't get up there to unlock the gate. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, when I, when I was hopping over the fence, um, you know, whenever you have to do something like that, you always um, have to be understanding you're on somebody's property and you have mm -hmm. to keep your head on a swivel. But um, my intentions with doing so was that I was being asked to come there. So. Um, it, it, it felt like a long call. Um, mm -hmm. We have alarms that have that same thing. You, you get called to an alarm and you get there and there's a gate and you have to hop over it to go down and check the house. Um, okay. But it felt, it felt like a normal call. Like a normal day. And let me pause right here. We appreciate you taking the time out to uh, yes, interview us because uh, this I can't even imagine what this has done to you, you, you and your family. So we thank you for, for sharing this. Uh, thank you. And we appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so you, you climb over the fence and um, judging by the video, the, the first house we saw, was that like a shed or something? Yeah, it was like a, a barn type deal. The house sits on like a farm area. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that first one that you see there where my car, you can almost see it from my car, is um, like a barn area. And then it, the driveway kind of goes down and loops around to the actual house. About how far, if you had to judge, how far is the house from that barn area? Um, I, I couldn't call it off the top of my head. I'd maybe uh, 100 yards. 100 yards. Yeah. So it was kind of close. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it, it seemed like a long, longer <laughs> than it would have been. Right. Right. Okay. So we, we see in the video uh, why, while you were actually uh, investigating the home, the property. Now, when you when you got to the property, were you just knocking on the door? Were you just looking around? Or yeah, how, how did that work? Um, Basically, the house itself had a fence around it, so obviously the, the property was fenced, but the house had a, a fence around it itself, so there was a dog there, and um, I played with the dog for a minute to make sure it was friendly before I went through the fence. Um, knocked on the door a few times, I, uh, couldn't get nobody to the door, mm -hmm. and um, started to head back to my patrol car when I couldn't make contact with anybody. Okay. And he, the, the gentleman, the suspect, he, he did fire shots into your patrol car right. while you were at the house. Right. Did you hear any type of sound? Because I can't really 
Yeah. Tell you how far. Did, 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 did you I hear something that sounded like gunfire? Isn't it? About halfway up, I started hearing what sounded like a, a banging noise, like somebody was hitting something really hard, mm -hmm. um, over and over again, repeatedly. And I, I kind of started looking towards where my patrol car was parked, towards the top of the driveway. I couldn't see it fully, um, but I knew I see movement. And I seen what looked like a, a green vehicle up there. Mm -hmm. um, moments later, that's when I heard, you know, two gunshots back to back. You know, bang, bang, and um, that time I, I immediately took a knee and. Um, you know, working in the county, we have, well, I hear a lot of gunshots. Right, so, right. You know, it's not illegal to shoot in the county, but mm -hmm. these gunshots were either I could tell were directly directed to me or at my patrol vehicle, or mm -hmm. just too close to the area, not just to be an accidental. Um, so I took a knee and let nine one know the shots were fired at that time. Okay. All right. Now, suspects drive up to the home where you were. Now, when when you encountered him, um, was he on foot or was he still in that vehicle? He was in the vehicle. Um, I, like I said, I'd taken cover behind the, mm. like, I don't know way I can describe it, it's kind of like a stump. <laughs> uh -huh. um, and he comes around the corner, um, throws his vehicle in park, uh, immediately steps out of the driver's seat of the vehicle and pulls a pistol on me. Okay. Yeah, puts it straight on me. Okay. So at that time, you proceed to, to run back to your car? Oh, well, first I, um, as soon as he gets out of the vehicle and points it at me, he shoots at me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was telling him to put it down, but when he shoots at me, I moved my right. There's a barbed wire fence there. I, I bounce off of it, um, pull my firearm at that time. He backs to the front of his vehicle, um, and, you know, I'm still trying to tell him to put it down. Where he was at, he had such good cover, and there was a, I believe it was his mother in the front seat. It would have taken a, a good shot to hit him at that point, so. Okay, that was my next question. Right. Why, why didn't you fire? So you, you, you were thinking about the safety of him. Right, yes. Yeah, so, um, it, it would have taken a, a really good shot to try and hit him at that point, mm -hmm. you know, so I was still trying to tell him to put the gun down, mm -hmm. even though he'd already shot at me once. Mm -hmm. um, at that time, he fires a second round. Mm -hmm. um, thankfully, at that point, I can't tell if I'm hit or not. Okay. You know, my adrenaline's pumping. It does, okay. So, uh, I kind of take my gun and push it forward towards mm -hmm. him, and uh, when he sees that, he does a ducking motion. Mm -hmm. I guess he thought I was going to shoot, and that's when I took my chance to try and get to some safety or some cover. Okay, so, so you were not hit there? I don't believe I was. Okay, so it was not until you climbed over the gate right, right. when, um, now he, he hit you first or you shot him first? I believe he hit me first. Okay. Um, when I jumped over the fence, um, you can kind of see in the video, I get my feet tangled up and I fall down directly on my stomach. Um, I knew he was chasing, I knew he was gonna be right behind me. Mm -hmm. um, so I roll over, start to roll over on my back to be able to draw my weapon because I knew he was going to come for me and mm -hmm. I look up and he's already there and he, he fires down on me and that's when I, when I could feel it. My adrenaline was pumping so much, the only way I can describe it is like taking a, a handful of sand somebody and, and throwing it at you. I, I could feel it hitting me but I couldn't, you know, wouldn't process and at that time, thankfully I was able to draw my service weapon and return fire and um, when I seen him, uh, kind of, that he'd been hit mm -hmm. um, and dropped his weapon, I, I was able to get off the ground and start moving to the rear of my vehicle and um, I noticed he started running back to his house. So. Okay. Now when you got in your vehicle, did, and I know this is kind of kind of hypothetical or whatnot, but when you got in your vehicle and you started to drive off, I know you were just trying to get away. Did you, did you have any idea where you may be driving to? No, oh, I, I had no idea. <laughs> uh -huh. I knew I, the only place I wanted to be was away from there. Um, right. Okay. And, you know, to try and regroup and um, get a game plan together. We're trying to deal with this, this fella because he's obviously, oh, yeah. uh, he's, at, he's out to hurt somebody. Uh, I noticed that when I got in my vehicle, my side mirrors were hanging. I, I kept trying to check and see if he was following me and I'd look over to my left and my mirrors are hanging and dangling. And, um, mm -hmm. Think, you know, I got out to the main road and I'm trying to let the other officers know what happened and mm -hmm. just trying to think of a safe place that in case he did follow me, you know, I'm not bringing this threat to the public. Right, exactly. So, man, you're thinking about all of this stuff and, and your life's in jeopardy and you're thinking about other people. Yeah. And um, I just, you know, I, I wanted to get to where I could get checked out and then, you know, let everybody know, hey, this is what we have mm -hmm. this is what, what we need to do. Um, thankfully, deputies were able to meet with me soon, soon after that and start treating me for wounds. I mean, so many people, uh, we just experienced um, Representative Randy Nix um, giving you um, a, an award. Um, the company who makes the bulletproof vest, they came down and presented you with a special vest. What has this attention, and I know this was attention that you didn't ask for, um, 
The fact that people are rewarding you for your service and presenting you um, with just a lot of kindness, how, how does that make you feel? Um, I, I appreciate it so much. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's been more than I could ever ask for. Mm -hmm. you, know, I, you know, I don't do what I do for um, money or the thanks or mm -hmm. fame or anything like mm -hmm. that. I, mm -hmm. I genuinely love my job um, mm -hmm. and just this right here, all these people doing all these wonderful things and all the th nice things are being said, it, it makes me love my job even more and just thankful that there's still people in the world that really back the blue light up. And, and sometimes, you know, the Lord just put us in certain positions and, and a lot of times he's, he's using us for even, you know, greater things that we know nothing about. And I know he's used this experience for you um, to just touch lives. I know lives have been changed, even though there may be a couple of negative things out there and whatnot, Absolutely. but for the most part, you know, you, you touch people's lives and you, you're able to do that. And, and outside of, you know, your normal daily job, you know, you, you just use to touch a lot of people's lives. Mm -hmm. and, and your uh, testimony shows that, you know, God does cover and protect oh, yeah. even when you're in situations that you have no control of. Absolutely. And uh, one last question, and uh, I'll let you get out of here and I'll talk to your, your lovely bride, uh, newlyweds. Um, young kid may be watching this interview who may aspire to be uh, in law enforcement. If you could speak to him and give him a word of advice, a word of wisdom, what would that be? Um, first thing I tell him is the best job in the world. Um, not to give up on the goal. Uh, every day, uh, push yourself a little bit harder, and um, you'll get there. It, it's it's a really rewarding job, and once you get part of the brotherhood, you'll you'll understand and never want to let it go. Okay. Michael Hockett, Hockett Deputy True County Sheriff's Department. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you. And I. Can't say thank you enough for sitting down and talking with us. Thank y'all. I, I really appreciate it. Now we're back with, uh, I guess uh, Michael can say his his better half. Yes, I am. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Jessica Hockett, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm very good. And Jessica has decided to go on camera, which we're mm -hmm. really grateful for mm -hmm. because Jessica, mm -hmm. and we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Jessica, what were you doing on uh, January the ninth? when you heard about what happened to your husband? I was at home. Mm -hmm. I was doing schoolwork and um, I had just sent him a text message and I was, we, we usually text back and forth and sometimes he'll just call me back mm -hmm. and um, I sent him a text and about five minutes later he calls me and he's like, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> and I reply, you know, just, mm -hmm. I'm doing schoolwork and mm -hmm. he says, okay, well, I don't want you to freak out or anything, but I've been in an incident, <laughs> gone to the hospital. I said, okay, can you, you know, elaborate a little bit more? Uh -huh. And um, he told me like a little bit about what was going on. He didn't tell me that he had been shot, mm -hmm. anything like that. So um, I told him that I'd get dressed and be on my way. Okay. All right. So you get to the hospital mm -hmm. and you find out what actually happened. Mm -hmm. Um, can you remember how you reacted? And that may be a crazy question to be asking, but people yeah. react differently in different situations, but I just wanted to know how, how you reacted. Yeah. Um, when I got there, um, there, my phone was dying on the car ride, so mm -hmm. uh, his chief had called me and let me know that he was going back for an x-ray. Um, so when I got there, people walked me back to the room, and he wasn't in there yet, but um, one of our good friends, um, she was there. I called her earlier because I knew that she was close and she could get to him faster. Mm -hmm. And I wanted somebody to be there with him. You know, I knew that his his law enforcement family was there with him, but I wanted somebody else to be there. Um, so I talked to her. She let, she filled me in on what was going on. So I kind of got to calm down before he got back in the room. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, and then when I saw him, I was just relieved, you know, to see he was okay and he was, you know, still. Mm -hmm. himself you know to some point <laughs> now do you appreciate the way he handled the situation by I, not telling you everything in detail of the phone yes because i mean i'm not going to lie i was already speeding there <laughs> okay. um but i i do appreciate it because it you know it was my adrenaline was going and i i was just kind of like imagining you know everything under the sun but um 
I'm glad he didn't tell me everything. I got you. And he, and he you know, you guys been together for seven years. Mm -hmm. Been married, you say one year, right? Yes, we okay. were married last May, so last we're coming up on a year. Okay, so he, he kind of knows you already. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> so he, he knew what to do. <laughs> knew what to do. Okay. And you, no kids yet. No. You have animals at the house, right? Yes, we have two dogs, two, dogs, two cats. Two dogs and two cats. Mm -hmm. Your marriage, just in this last month or so, what has this ordeal, this episode, what has it done for your marriage? It's opened us to something new. Um, I mean, we're already, you know, best friends. Like, there's no better way to describe it. You know, he, he you know, helps me when I fail and comforts mm. me mm. on my worst days. Mm. And then to see him in this and to see how he's overcoming it, it just makes me so proud of him. And you know, it's, it just, you kind of have to step back and just look at your, what y'all, like what you two are doing, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's with every marriage, you know, you just look at the relationship you have and it's just, you're just blessed mm -hmm. <laughs> to have it. Exactly. Exactly. All right. And one last question, and I'll let you get out of here. I'm not going to keep you as long because uh, you were so gracious that you uh, graced us with your presence on camera. Uh, just, just tell us how you guys met. Um, well, <laughs> well um, we had a friend who was throwing a party, and we he actually um, had seen me before, but I didn't know, uh -huh. and he tried to reach out to me, and I didn't know him, so I kind of like, you know, uh -huh. checked the bell a little bit. <laughs> um, but in the end, uh, he ended up putting his number into my phone, and I put first and last names, and when I saw it was just his name, I said, he did this. So I, I texted him, and you know, we kind of started from there, but it was through mutual friends. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Ms. Jessica, we thank you so much for thank you for having us. giving us an uh, interview, and many more years of marriage and bliss to you and Michael. And uh, just continue to, to walk together and be a blessing to other people. And I know you'll continue to do that. Mm -hmm. You guys are a lovely couple. And uh, we just thank God for you guys. Thank you. All right.